Welcome back, man. It's been almost a year at this point since you've had a chance to fight. So, I mean, uh, I guess, first of all, how good does it feel to be fighting again? And did you think it would be this long of a stretch? I definitely didn't think it was going to be this long, but uh, it, does, does, it does feel good to be back. And this feels good, too. Just like having some a little bit closer to, uh, to normalcy. Yeah, getting back. It's nice to hear people actually want to do media. It's good. It's good. It's been a while, so I miss you guys. <laughs> nice. Talk about, um, you know, January. You were supposed to fight in January. Didn't get a chance to do so. Um, were you surprised it took as long as it did to get rebooked? Like, what, what happened between I, then? I wasn't because I had a couple injuries, and, and I was banged up going into that fight anyways. And then I got COVID, so I needed some time to recover from that. So it actually worked out. It worked out pretty good, I think. I was going to say, so it was almost a blessing? Like, I mean, because yeah. you were going to go in there hurt and just yeah. – just hope for the best, I guess. Exactly. I was going in there for 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 a paycheck, and uh, obviously to to win the fight, that's one hundred percent the goal. And I still think I was going to win the fight, but I, I had some injuries, and, and that COVID really fucked me up. How, how did how did the COVID impact you? I mean, because it's like different for everybody, right? We're yeah, all still yeah. trying to figure it, out. It's it's weird how it is different for everybody. Because I have a friend that has one kidney, and uh, he got it, and he had to be, he had to be hospitalized, but because he was um because he was dehydrated, not because he was sick. He was out a day after, and he was fine. I'm like, dude, how did you get it for basically two days? I had it for 10 days full. First day was really bad, uh, exhaustedly tired and just felt like absolute crap. Uh, then the rest of the days after that, I was just lethargic the entire time. It was just so frustrating. I was like, I, I got, and at that point I had the fight and I was like, I'm literally starting this fight off with COVID. I'm like, this is so frustrating right now. So what's been the focus since? I mean, obviously, you know, healing up the injuries, just getting healthy, I guess, has probably been a big yeah. part of it. But but what else has been the focus? Uh, that's about it. But uh, two weeks ago, I had my, my second daughter, second baby girl. Yep. Congratulations. That, that's been a little bit of an adjustment period, but my wife's been doing great. So when the schedule for this fight came out, was there any talk about, like, oh, maybe maybe this isn't a good time? Uh, there was. I tried to move it back a little bit further, but everything happens for a reason. Nice. Now, obviously, the last fight out was a loss. Um, now you've had to dwell on it, right, for a year. So I just wonder, yeah, what's that like? Because I know everybody wants, like, after they lose, they want to get in there right away and get yeah. that out. It's super frustrating, especially that one, because I, I know how everybody loved that fight. Everyone liked that fight. And I didn't like that fight, man. I, I lost. I feel like I, I did enough to win the first two rounds, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what I think. I lost that fight, and I've been just sitting on it, dwelling on it, like you said, for the past 11 months. So I'm ready to go out there on Saturday night and, and reverse it and get that win. Very nice. They give you the matchup, Edson Barbosa, a guy that's you know been doing it at a high level for a long time. So what did you think when that was the name? Oh, man, I got goosebumps. Got uh, like my hair standing up. I was like, yes, this is one, man. Because after that, I mean, you, go, you come off a loss, you don't know what you're going to get offered. You don't know what you're going to get. But uh, to, to get a, a name like Edson Barbosa right off, off of a loss, dude, I, this is all, I feel like this is the biggest fight of my career, honestly. Yeah. Where, where do you evaluate him, right? Because he, ha he had some setbacks, but he's still obviously in incredibly dangerous, yeah. right? He's a guy yeah. that you yeah. – I guess you know you're going to get hurt a little bit when you go in there. <laughs> and I embrace it. I'm not scared of it at all. Um, uh, he's one of those guys that I'm, I know I'm going to be seeing his, his highlight reel. I mean, I've been seeing his highlight reel since I was in high school. But uh, for, the, for the next couple of days, since you know when Edson's fighting, they like to put that spinning uh, hook kick of Terry Adam – during fight week, so I know I'm going to be seeing that, but it's similar to when I fought Emmett. They just kept replaying Emmett knockouts, and I'm just like, all right, all right, that's good, that's okay. But uh, it's good because it, it, it keeps that, that little bit of fear, that little bit of uh, those nerves, and you need those. I was going to say, you said you embrace it. Like on paper, when they announced this fight, I think everybody's like, oh, this is going to be an absolute war. I mean, is that what you feel like as well, or do you feel like I can go in there and dominate this guy. Yeah, that's exactly what I feel at the second part. But um, it's, it's, it's one of those fights that you run it 100 times, it's going to be exciting every single time. There's just no possible way that this fight could be boring. Man. Last thing for me, I guess, obviously the goal here is to win. But what else? I mean, do you feel like – because I feel like you have, like, all this momentum behind you, right? Do you feel like you need to go out there and do something special to kind yeah. of regain that back? Yeah, I, I got to go out there and not just win. It, it, every time I win, I feel like it's – I've had some good wins in UFC, but I, I need that statement-making win. And uh, to do that over someone like Edson Barboza, who – is a legend in the sport. He's definitely going to be a Hall of Famer. Uh, this is the one. This is this is the one for me. Shane, uh, right here. You obviously matched up with Hakeem Dawadu before this. Uh, he's on a long win streak. He's racking up a lot of impressive wins. Do you, but do you prefer fights against Edson, the legend, or do you want those fights against the guys that are just on these I long mean, win streaks? I mean, no disrespect to, to Hakeem, but everybody knows who Edson Barboza is, man. Like, it's one of those fights that this is going to propel me. Even though I'm ranked 9 and he's 13, I feel like this is one of those fights that's going to even push me even further. So I, I, how could I not... How could I turn down a fight against Edson Barboza? And then obviously in the last, what, few months, the, the rise of leg kicks has kind of been the talk of the MMA world, especially after the Connor fight where we saw a, the, the Weidman-Hall fight. Yep. So how do you train for someone like Edson who, like he himself said, like I've been doing this 
since my first UFC fight. I'm sure, and you obviously said it. So how do you train leg kicks? I'm sure it's I, difficult. I come from a, a kickboxing, a primarily, primarily kickboxing-based gym already. So it's something that we've been doing for years already. Everybody on my gym can kick. Everybody in my gym is primarily a kicker too. So it works out for me. And then since your last fight, a lot's been going on in the division. You know, you had the title fight. Max came back. Uh, Gig, the rise of Giga Chikadze. Uh, the Ortega zombie fight. So what do you make of this state of the division right now since your last fight? It's been fun, man. I, I was bummed that uh, the Ortega and um, Volkanovski fight got canceled because that puts a little bit of a log jam at the, at the end because then you got Holloway who's still waiting there because he's probably going to get a title shot next. So that, that's been a little bit of fr uh, frustrating, but I haven't been able to fight, so it hasn't affected me too much. But moving forward, it might after this one. Over here, Shane. What's your mindset coming in with this being the longest layoff of your career? You used to be an active fighter. You had COVID, and then all this is kind of like jitters since it's kind of something fresh you've never done in your career. Uh, no, I kind of it feels like I'm just picking back up where I left off. Uh, I don't believe in ring rust because I train my ass off. Like Dominic Cruz always says, too, ring rust isn't real. Ring rust is what you make it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in camp 24-7, 365, unless I have some kind of crazy injury because this, this is my lifestyle. I live this, and this is what I do to provide for my family, so I take this super serious. I, I live this life. Since your appearance in the sport, do you watch all combat sports? Like, did you watch Canelo fight last week? Yeah, I did, yes. How much has seeing somebody like that at that level inspire you just as a straight combatant and as a fan of just combat sports oh, in general? Huge fan of Canelo Alvarez. He's, he's probably, I think, I think Pound Pound, he's, he's the best fighter right now in the world. And he's, this, this, the skill he has, man, it's, it's beautiful to watch. And you, you, you are a big, a big level fighter. Do you take anything when you see somebody like that on that big stage from the mental game? Like he doesn't flinch and stuff like that, or just seeing the people at two sixty one. I know you, you weren't there, but does that atmosphere get you ready to hear all the craziness you're gonna hear on Saturday? Yeah, I, I was, I was excited to see the the, the weigh-in show for for two sixty one. Just see the crowd and then see the one. But if you watch the first fight of that that two sixty one card, the, it was packed and the fans were going wild, and that was just giving me fucking goosebumps, man. I couldn't wait to feel that myself. I can't wait to make the walk. I can't wait for the weigh-in show, which I didn't think I'd be so excited for. But I'm actually hyped just for the weigh-in show to get that little bit of a teaser, just to feel that atmosphere again. And it's Saturday, all only all about getting your hand raised, or do you have to put on a show? Because people are pegging y'all. If, if we were doing odds in Vegas, y'all y'all are odds to win the fight of the night. No, no fight of the night. This is gonna be my first performance of the night. Also, oh, so, so is that, is that, that's kind of, you got that swag. Is that sense insinuating that you think you're going to finish him? Yes. <laughs> hey, Shane, uh, New Yorker to New Yorker. <laughs> you know, home's been hit hard. You know, gyms have been closed since, you know, well, they've only been open since August. <laughs> so what's it going to mean for you to finally have the chance to step onto the mat and compete in front of a packed house, crowds of thousands. Like I said, man, I'm, I'm excited to just feel that energy, just feel the crowd. And I got a lot of friends and a lot of family that follow me for all these fights. So as soon as they found out that, that this one's going to be open to the public, I got a lot of people coming. So to, to hear them and to see them in the crowd, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be crazy. Thank you. All good? Perfect. Thank you, guys.